All right, thank you for joining me today. Uh, in this video, I'm building the guitar. I used some locally sawn, locally grown, locally sawn uh, black walnut that I purchased. I got it off of another woodworker uh, on Facebook Marketplace. Um, like I said, the wood is uh, rough sawn, doesn't have straight edges or anything like that. So I've got to do all the work to uh, get the wood ready for the guitar that I'm going to be building. Got to cut it down, got to plane it, all that kind of stuff. Um, get the size right, all that kind of good stuff. But the point of this guitar that I'm working on um, was actually to uh, just test out mixing a whole bunch of different techniques, not just using one method for building a guitar. Uh, I use a CNC, I use uh, hand tools, uh, I free route. Do a bunch of different stuff on this guitar but right now i'm just uh getting the boards ready breaking them down that kind of stuff so you can see it's uh got a big broken edge on it um, when you buy wood like this uh, it saves you a, a lot of money um, if i was using a ready-made blank that would cost me about 90 dollars at current mar market value for black walnut um, but i paid a hundred dollars for uh, 10 boards that's enough to build probably at least eight or nine guitars probably 10 or 12 that's next fretboards everything it was a mix of hardwood i didn't just get black walnut um, some of the boards are black walnut some of the boards are sycamore some of the boards are cherry so i got a pretty good mix of different hardwoods and like i said i only paid a hundred dollars for it uh, so it was a pretty good deal and um if you just keep your eye out, usually you can find a woodworker or somebody, if you have a lot of woodworkers in your area, like I do in mine, um, somebody who just has an overabundance of wood that they just need to get rid of. Uh, this wood, uh, of course, it's not kiln-dried. It's air-dried. Um, so when I got it, it had been sitting for uh, at least a year in the guy's garage. He just had too many projects and stuff going, and he needed to clean out his garage and everything. So I got a pretty sweet deal on this wood. Uh, here I'm cutting one of the edges down, um, getting it sized properly. Uh, the reason I cut that particular edge off was it had a little bit more uh, of the white colored uh, sap wood that uh, walnut has on it. And also uh, it's the rough edge closer where the bark and everything is going to be at. Uh, so I just wanted to get rid of that edge, uh, have a nice clean edge to work with. This is going to be a four-piece um, sandwiched or uh, pancake blank. Uh, I like doing it that way, and you'll see a little bit later on why I chose to do it that way on this guitar. Um, one of the things I do is I actually overlap the joint, which makes the joint really, really strong. There the boards are playing down and everything, getting ready to glue them up. Um, I don't have any video of me edge jointing the boards. Uh, I use a router jig uh, on my router table. And uh, it makes it pretty easy to get a good, clean, straight edge. Um, you just want to spread the glue evenly. Uh, I just use regular tight bond wood glue. Nothing special. Uh, walnut is an oily wood, but it's not like some exotic woods where you have to use certain type of glue with it. Uh, you don't want to get too much or too little glue, uh, just enough to uh, get the boards to stick together, basically. You want some squeeze out, but not a whole lot. Uh, and you kind of figure that out as, as time goes by. Um, typically, just two sash clamps. Sometimes I use three um, just to make it uh, pressure a little bit more even. But uh, And I don't mind knots and stuff in the wood, as you can see on this guitar. Uh, sometimes you can actually work with the boards uh, and figure out where the knots and stuff are going to be. And it'll be in a spot where you're routing out, and uh, so the knot won't even actually be there. Uh, but sometimes knots also cause some interesting figuring in the wood. Uh, so uh, around the knot, it kind of has just a weird wavy grain. Uh, so if you can kind of, if you want to cut the knot out, um, you can cut real close to the knot and leave some of that wavy grain. But like I said, I don't mind the knot so much. Um, I like just the way black walnut looks. Uh, it's a really great wood. You don't have to paint over it. Um, you can just use... Uh, on this guitar, I just used a hard oil finish um, when I was all said and done with it. But like I said, the point of this one was to use a mix of techniques 
and uh, as we get a little bit further into the video, um, marking the guitar out, I used a magic marker uh, with a kind of a wide point on it, and I used a high contrast color on the black walnut, because sometimes if you use pencil, it doesn't show up. So I kind of like to use the magic marker, and here I'm just pointing out where the seam is going to be, uh, how they're going to overlap each other, and it's not going to be a seam on top of a seam. Uh, which gives the glue joint a much stronger bond. And as you can see, there's some of the white sap wood uh, on this other piece that I'm using. Most of it uh, I cut out. There's a little bit of it that can be seen on the edge when everything was said and done. But I don't mind that too much. I just didn't want a whole lot of that white sap wood, uh, especially not on the face of the guitar. Like I said, it's uh, sandwiched between two pieces, so it's just on one part of the guitar. And a lot of times, if you kind of figure everything out, you can cover it up with an output jack or something like that. Uh, and sometimes your hard oil finish seeps in there, and it darkens it up real good. If you cut real close to the line, cut right on it with that magic marker, uh, it's a lot easier to shape it when you put your template and stuff on there. On these, I did it in a single pass, as you'll see in just a minute. Uh, just made the, the process a lot easier. Um, also, it's easier on your uh, router and on your tools and everything, cutting these thinner boards. Um, they're only half thickness, so uh, I think the guitar came out to be 1 and 5 eighths inch thick was the total thickness. One piece was about 1 inch, uh, and the other board was a little over uh, 5 eighths, I think 3 fourths. So uh, it came out to be 1 and 5 eighths inch thick. Like I said, I don't remember exactly what the, the two thicknesses are. Uh, but like I said, a little bit, a little bit thicker than uh, an inch and a half in total thickness. So uh, that's my 12-inch Craftsman bandsaw that I'm using. Uh, it does a pretty good job even on this hardwood. Um, it's got about a half horsepower motor, so it's able to cut through it and everything real good. Uh, what's really cool when you do it uh, this method? Um, here in just a second, I'll show you cleaning up the boards. Uh, you can get one whole pass with no problems on each each board. So it comes out with a real clean look. Sometimes when you do more than one pass on the router table, uh, if your bit's not set up just right, um, on my router table, you put a little bit too much pressure on it and the tip has a tendency to move so you don't get a real clean edge and it just requires a lot more edge sanding. On this guitar I didn't have to do too much because of the way I routed out. And we'll see that in just a second. Here I'm just pointing out some of the knots and everything that and some of the white sapwood. Here I am routing out the guitar body with the on the router table using the template attached to it. I just use screws. A lot of guys use double side tape, but uh, I just prefer to use screws. If you plan out where you're going to put the screws in the template, you can put it in a spot where it's going to be routed, like the neck pocket uh, and whatnot, or on the side that's going to be glued together. And like I said, it just takes a single pass. I used a bottom bearing bit. Uh, which, when you have the router in the router table, the bearing is actually on the top of the router bit. Um, Here I am routing out the, handheld mode. the guitar it's body. Lobby, so it's a bottom router bit. With there the it is. I've shown you how clean it came out. Table using the template attached to it. I just use screws. A lot of guys use double side tape, but uh, I just prefer to use screws. If you plan out where you're going to put the screws in the template, you can put it in a spot where it's going to be routed, like the neck pocket. Uh, and whatnot, or on the side that's going to be glued together. And like I said, it just takes a single pass. I used a bottom bearing bit, uh, which when you have the router in the router table, the bearing is actually on the top of the router bit. Um, but when it's in the handheld mode, it's on the bottom, so it's a bottom router bit. And there it is. I've shown you how clean it came out with just a single pass. Uh, like I said, if you get real, real close, 
um, to that edge when you're cutting it on the bandsaw. You can do that without too many problems. Here, uh, I decided to do an internally chambered guitar for the wire routings. I marked it out and then I routed it freehand. It, you get much better results. Uh, the lines weren't real straight and they actually wound up being just a little bit wider than they really had to be after I was done. Um, I uh, just used a regular fixed base router to do it. Took several passes to do it in. I didn't take out a whole lot. I was trying to be as precise as I could be, uh, but it's still kind of wavy. Uh, I don't really recommend doing it this way. Um, it's always better to set up a template or an edge guide or something. You're just going to get much, much cleaner results. Uh, if it doesn't turn out very good when you route it out, when you're running the wires through it, they can kind of get hung up on the rough edges and the board. And they're just hard to push through. Uh, but on this, they're they're very wide, uh, so I didn't have any any problems at all running the wires through. Uh, I'll show you the wiring setup and stuff in a later video. Uh, but like I said, I like using this method. Um, it just makes things easier towards the end. I don't have to worry about drilling holes or anything like that, and it's a wider cavity in the guitar so it relieves a little bit of weight uh, but also makes it much easier to route your wires through especially if you have several pickups that you're using that you're having to run wires between the switches and stuff you just have more room for that as opposed to uh, a hole and also uh, when you're drilling the hole you have to have an extra long router bit there's the chamber there the channel that I routed in it um, like I said, it's not real clean. Uh, it didn't really have any rough spots. It's just not a perfectly straight line. And here it is. After I glued it together, uh, I left one edge unrouted and glued it together. And then routed that second pass with both of the pieces glued together. And it came out pretty nice. Uh, thank you for watching. And check out the next video where I do some more work. Um, I'll be using the CNC.